Hello everyone, it's Leo, and in this video we're going to talk about episode 16 from Delicious Party Precure. This was a Ran episode and I was very excited. I think Ran is a very interesting character. So I really wanted to get to know more of her, to see more of her quirky and crazy side. And I feel like this episode delivered in this aspect. At the same time, this was a very weird narrative because it focused on Ran. Yes, it did. But it also focused a lot on Takagi, who is Ran's classmate. And... Look, I feel like whenever you focus on a secondary character in a show like Precure, it has to be to add something to the main story and to add something to the character that you're dealing with. And I feel like Ran's realization of her quirkiness, of her weirdness, being a good part of her personality came before the focus on Takagi. And I'm going to be very honest here. I was not interested in Takagi's story at all. I'm not saying that Takagi is a horrible person because I don't really think he is, even though what he did to Dan was something bad. But I was just not interested. I just didn't think it would add. And I didn't think it did. So I feel like every time the focus was on Takagi, it was a little bit of wasted time. So this was a weird episode to me. But even with those parts that I did not enjoy, I feel like Run's portions of the episode were very good. Uh, first, we get to know very early on in the episode that when she was a young child, she went through a situation that all the other children thought that she was very strange and they started getting away from her. Because of this, she went through a lonely childhood. And this is not the first time we see this in Precure. I feel like every time Precure tries to tackle this topic, they do this very well. The first one that comes to mind is Himari from Kira Kira Precure, one of my favorite seasons. So I absolutely love how they handled it with Himari. It was more or less the same that happened with Ran. Uh, with Himari, it was her obsession with food. Same with Ran, but their obsessions are different. Uh, Sango in Tropical Rouge went through a different path. She learned early on to hide herself so that she could mash uh, with everybody and not be noticed. So it's a different way of dealing with more or less the same topic. And now with Ran, after uh, she gets called weird at the start of the episode, because of the way she described her experience of eating a sandwich, it all comes back to her. And she starts acting very weird. She starts acting differently around the girls. Yui and Kokone notice this very fast, especially Yui. They notice this very fast. And it's also important for us to talk a little bit about Takagi's comments on Ran. Because obviously Takagi did not have the intention of digging up something traumatic for her, but he ended up doing it. Not talking about the episode itself and talking more about us as a society, as in like real life. Sometimes we do make some comments and talk about other people without taking into consideration how much that can affect them. And even little comments like the one he did when he said, oh, that's weird. You're talking to food. That's weird. That's that's what he said at first. Like, something that for someone can be something very minor, for another person can be a whole storm. So we need to be very careful on how we talk about other people because that affects them in their life we can we saw that with Dan, like how she was trying to fit in and not share basically the the core part of her personality and when Dan tells the girls what happens it was very funny because uh we see that takagi 
the classmate that was saying that Adan was talking to a sandwich and was a very weird person. He is known for telling big lies at school. And it was very funny that Yui believed in all of them. And look, I absolutely adore this uh, side, this personality of Yui. I love it. She is a very cute girl. She is not the crazy type of leader that we have in Precure, those exaggeratedly uh, energetic girls, but she is allowed to be silly and very, very silly. But the focus here is on Ran. Ran is all weirded out uh, because of the whole situation and she wants uh, not to be noticed anymore. People at school don't know about Kurista and she tells the girls what happened when she was a kid and everything else. And so Yui even confronts Takagi later on, but it doesn't uh, lead to anything. Takagi still thinks uh, Ran is very weird and he starts talking more about that. And Ran starts being very self-conscious about herself. And then uh, the girls, you know, their friend, and like there is a, one weird, I had a weird feeling with that, uh, that dialogue when Ran was talking to the girls about her childhood and how she was suffering and uh, because of her loneliness and people thinking she's weird. I thought, like, why aren't the girls saying anything to her? Like, why aren't the girls saying, it's okay to be like this, it's okay. But I understand that they were, like, waiting for the right moment and that happened a while later because they took Ran for a ramen party. And look, that scene is one of my favorites from this season. Uh, not the cooking scene. I mean, the cooking scene was cute and it was nice seeing Dan get her spirits back up again. I loved it. But the scene after that, when the girls were eating, Rosemary started talking about how Dan is weird because Dan is weird. But her weirdness is a great characteristic, a great part of her. And we, as humans, we all love different things. We all feel differently about things. And we all share our love for things differently as well. And I feel like that Rosemary line about weirdness and about liking and about loving and how we love different things as humans was so representative of so many things. I understand that uh, they were talking about food and not only food, but like things you like, things you enjoy in life. But if you apply that to our lives as adults and so many other things, that us human beings go through in society, it works so well. And it's such a warm embrace towards every way of being. I think you understand what I'm going for. And I love that scene so, 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 so much. That was my favorite scene of the episode and I think it was brilliant. But after that, Yui's mom comes home and she starts talking about Takagi and his family. And then we start seeing Takagi's side of the story, which for me was not necessary at all because that Mari talk before already cleared Ran's side. It already made Ran understand how she has to be and how she doesn't have to be ashamed of her quirkiness of her weirdness. And look, I think that Takagi's side of the story was well written, as in, it made sense with the things he said to his classmates. Obviously, it did not justify what he was saying about Dan, and I don't think the episode tried to do that. But I feel like the episode gave him a lot of focus when it was not needed. Ran's journey to understand her weirdness was enough already. And uh, we had a scene later on in the episode that Takagi accepts Ran's weirdness too. 
And, you know, that was a step up for Dan because now Dan is able to share her weirdness with the world. And that was proven in that scene. Yes, but I still feel like it could have been done in some sort of way that wouldn't have to uh, focus this much on a secondary character that will probably not be relevant for the series at all. But this episode also brought us nice things. Uh, we have Black Pepper, who appeared uh, two episodes ago or three episodes ago, uh, depending on how you consider his first appearance to be. Um, and in this episode, he was mentioned by Godots, the big villain of Delicious Party. Godots asked about Black Pepper to Sigritru and Narcistru. And uh, I wonder how Godots knows about him, or I don't know if this matters, I don't know. But I, it doesn't really feel like Godots was worried. Godots was only thinking about getting all the recipe. That's all we know about Godots, basically. But the villain scene was very funny with Narcistro. I love Narcistro so much. Narcistro is just, you know, out of this world, he's amazing. He is a gorgeous villain. I love him. And all the poses he was trying to make. Oh my god, I loved it. And Narcissus attacked and we had a fighting scene. And I feel like it was very nice seeing Kira Yum Yum use her secondary attack in a different way to free herself from uh, her prison as... I don't know if you can call that a prison, but whatever. You get what I mean. It was very cool. And apart from that, we did not have anything else in the fight. We just had Yum Yum Drain, her solo attack. So, I mean, it was nice seeing her use her minor attack in another way. But that's it. Nothing special to, to say about the fighting scene. Very boring. And we didn't see Black Pepper today, did we? We did not. And... Uh, Interesting, because, I mean, he was mentioned, we saw him in, and we saw Takumi too, looking at the girls, but we did not see him watching the fight. Was he watching the fight? Or is he, like, okay now, he sees that the girls are able to defend themselves and he is not involved anymore? That's probably not the case. <laughs> Anyways, at the end of the episode, Dan gains her confidence and is able to be weird in front of everybody uh, without being afraid of judgment. And that's a nice thing, you know. I like the message of this episode a lot. And next week, we are going to have Amane back. And Amane wants to quit being the student council president. That means that she is feeling guilty for what she did as Jetlu. Mm. Things are getting interesting and we are walking towards Cure Finale. Excited. I am excited. Anyways, I recorded this audio only because I am very congested, as you can probably notice by my voice, and I don't look good at all. <laughs> Anyways, babies, thank you so much for following this video along. A special thank you to the members of the Magical Cinnamon channel. And if you've watched up to now, thank you so much as well. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, bye-bye.